Everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Well, today I want to talk about one of my favorite things to do as I'm improvising and composing using rhythmic displacement. Of course, this is for all instruments. This is, you know, what drummers do, but I want all of us working on this stuff. Also today, we have a new Jazzwire giveaway and we have about 600 bucks worth of merchandise. So we have a fantastic sponsor that I want to tell you about as well. So we're going to get to that in just a second. Stick around. All right, so rhythmic displacement. What is rhythmic displacement? Sounds a little fancy. It is literally moving things around in time. If I say, hey, let's have a meeting today at noon. The meeting tomorrow is at 11 o'clock. We're displacing it in time. We're moving it in time. It's kind of that easy. So if we have a rhythm that starts on beat one, what about if we shift it and start it somewhere else? What about if we start it on beat two or the end of two? That gets pretty interesting. And now you've heard this a million times. This comes to mind. I think that's a Bob Marley tune. Uh, no, 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 it's not. It's, a, it's an old swing tune called In the Mood. Yeah. Um, it has that little three note grouping and the way it starts on different beats. It starts on beat one, then it starts on the end of two and it moves around. So we've heard rhythmic displacement all over the place. Thelonious Monk liked using it. I started thinking about, you know, the last five songs I've written. Every single one of them has rhythmic displacement in it. So it's a tool that many of us use and it's one that I really love. So let's start at the beginning. So check out the first item on the sheet here. By the way, I'd love to send you this PDF. It's free, all the PDFs are always free. So just uh, write me at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com and I'll send this thing off to you. On the sheet, we see three simple notes. That is my brilliant idea. So now, how do we move that around in time? So what I'm gonna do is set a metronome that's beeping or making a different sound on beat one. All right, so I don't know about you, but that is the coolest thing in the world to me about how we had, in this instance, 4-4 four, four going on and how I could move that little melody of three quarter notes and a quarter rest and how I could move it around. In the first measure, I had it starting on beat one. In the second measure, I had it starting on beat two. In the next measure, I had those quarter notes all off the beat. I started on the end of two, so to keep that idea the same, all the quarter notes that followed were all off beats. So this is very cool, right? How we can move things in rhythm is a big deal. So now, of course, for you to be able to pull this off yourself, that was very simple, playing th the first three notes from a C major scale in 4-4 four, four at an easy tempo. But to be able to manipulate the time, you have to have real control over the pulse. You have to know where beats one, two, three, and four are. You just can't be thinking note, 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 or pulse, 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 because you're lost. You have to know where beat one is, where beat two is. And yeah, we have the technology to have our metronomes, you know, make different sounds on beat one or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's about you knowing where the time is and then doing something different over top. It's, uh, it's a skill most of us have to learn and practice, uh, but it's really, really worth it. So what I did um, to sort of give you a sense so that you can hear this stuff, it's, it's kind of conceptual and it's great that you can see it on paper, but we need to hear it and realize we've heard it before. So I wrote a quick little blues here. Let me play this thing down for you and I'll play it twice and see if you can hear what's going on. The first time I'm gonna let you see it um, on the screen and the second time I'm gonna take it down and I want you to just listen to it and see if you can feel the effects of the rhythmic displacement.
right. So if any of you are on the Grammy uh, committee, you know, don't forget me. I, I feel like that's a pretty good song. It's called The Displacement Blues. <laughs> okay. So uh, hopefully that sounded like a decent tune, right? And, and I think maybe you heard this idea that kept coming back in different ways, but I moved it around in time to keep it interesting. Let's take a look at it. So that first theme are those five notes. They begin on beat one. And now in the first line, that happens three more times, a total of four times. So the first time it happens on beat one, the second time it happens on, ah, I start the whole thing on beat two. I shift everything later in the measure. The next time what happens? Beat three in the third measure. And then the next time I get clever and rush it, I come in on the end of two. I put it in an unexpected place and I change the last note or two of the lick to help me transition to the next harmonic place. But I've displaced, I've taken one idea and moved it to four different places in time in four measures. Let me play it for you with no accompaniment. So now if this is a big band tune, I can imagine the drummer or the trombone section answering, maybe something like this. Okay, so maybe a little room for a conversation in there. All right, so let's go back to the tune. In the second line, we see an idea that again starts on beat one. And then in the following measure, second measure of the second line, I start that idea on beat two. It's the same idea, but I start it later. I've displaced it in time. Okay, I add a little connection to it, and now we're back to the first idea in the uh, third measure of the second line. And then there's a little extra connecting material. It's not really related to anything else in the fourth measure of the second line. Now, in the third line, again, a, a little bit of kind of related material, which I again move and displace to beat two. So now I've done that little trick a number of times. I've done it on every line. I start an idea in the first measure of each line on beat one, then in the following measure, put it on beat two. I displace it a beat late. So I've done that actually in each line here. So we could say that's part of what makes this sound like a composition. That's part of what makes this hang together. Part of what makes it sound like maybe a pro wrote this tune. Yeah, there's some organization underneath. And the last couple measures of the tune, I actually start the, the original idea in yet a different place on beat four. If you look at the last five notes of the song, I'm starting my idea on beat four. So I've used this little idea and I've played it on beat one, on beat two, on beat three, on the end of two, on beat four. I think that's it. But that's five different places that I've taken this idea and I was able to move it to five different places. So here's an interesting question. How many different places could I move that idea? Well, there's eight eighth notes in a measure, so there's at least eight places I could start. On one, the and a one, two, the and a two, three. So there's eight possibilities. I used five of them. Interesting. But here's the thing, we can subdivide further. I can start on beat one, I can start on the and of one, but I can start on the second sixteenth of one. I can start displacing things by a sixteenth note or by an eighth note triplet. So it gets pretty wild how we can start displacing things. So traditionally staying with, you know, sort of the underlying rhythm of the song, which is 4-4 four, four in jazz, it's eighth notes. So, you know, typically we'd be um, displacing things with eighth notes. Cool. So I think you get an idea of what this is about. So like I said, this is going to take a little bit of work. So if it just sort of tickles your brain and now you understand how good music works, great. This is a really big deal. Um, if this is something you want to work on, get a metronome that makes a different sound on beat one, clink, boop, 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 clink, boop, right? To let you know where things are. By the way, I didn't have a metronome like that when I was learning how to do this stuff back in the Stone Age. Um, but yeah, 
Get working like that and get comfortable with taking a simple idea and moving it around in time. So I tell you what, I'm gonna improvise a little bit on the way out. I'm gonna play this etude one more time. I'm going to improvise and see if I can use some ideas, just improvise something and move it around in time and trust that I can pull something like that off. So let me play this uh, tune for you one more time, do a little improvising. Have a great time with this material. Let me know if you have any questions. That's what the comment box is for on YouTube. Take care.